Hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I'll be drinking Double Mountain's Aging Experiment 9 and 3 quarters. Hence the t-shirt. Um, I'm guessing they're expecting some magic in the bottle. Ha ha ha. <laughs> That's the end of the dad jokes. Yeah, right. Um, this is batch number five. It is a barrel aged sour stout. Um, it is 55 bittering units and 9% ABV, so not quite so bitter as the IRA, India Red Ale, that I tried recently, but still pretty high up there on the bitter. I've really enjoyed my sour stouts in the past, so I'm looking forward to this. Um, it's a relatively new style because sour and stout aren't usually something you see together, but it is what it is. It's a mixed culture, and um, it has the year 2018 on it, which I guess if it's an aging experiment, I would guess they probably began the, or they originally brewed this beer in 2018, making this a, about a four-year-old beer, perhaps. Uh, there's no other age indication on the bottle anywhere, so I would have to do more research to figure out exactly what all's involved there. They don't even have a bottle on date, which most of the other Double Mountains I've seen have. Anyways, this is only my second Double Mountain beer. It's an interesting style, and I like Harry Potter, so <laughs> let's see what it's all about. Okay, core is dark. I've had a couple other... Uh, sour stouts, barrel aged sour stouts. Uh, I believe one by Cascade. I think the Mayan Bourbonic was a barrel aged sour stout. And that was really something special. So we'll see. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely stout characteristics to it. Kind of a little bit of dark cherry, uh, more of the sweeter stout side. Uh, maybe a little bit of coffee and chocolate. Yeah, more coffee and chocolate. Ooh, also some molasses when I stuck my nose in there real deep. Okay, so some molasses. Um, maybe even some, maybe even some brighter berries like a raspberry almost. But yeah, it's a definitely a combination of your your typical sour. Uh, sour berry kind of flavors and your stout darkness, the the molasses, the kind of the roasty notes, uh, dark chocolate, um, coffee, etc. Maybe even a touch of smoke. Hmm, that's interesting. That might be where the molasses is coming from. Um, kind of a smoke to a berry uh, gamut or a range will have molasses in there. Like if you have smoke at one end and, and you know raspberry cherry on the other end, you'll probably find molasses in the middle. Yeah, definitely some, some smokiness. That's quite interesting. Uh, I wonder how dark they roasted the the grains and if it was a like an oven heat where they kept this the smoke separate from the grains or if they actually smoked the grains to begin with um historically when you're roasting the the, the grains in order to produce malt you are it was done over low fires, big wide floors built over low fires, and the smoke went right through the grain. So historically, beer was very smoky. You see very few smoky beer styles today. Schwartz beer, um, that's about it. Uh, Schwartz meaning black. Um, they might be called smoky lagers or something. Not ales quite so often. I believe they're mostly lagers. But with the invention of more modern, more precise, more controllable heating methods, most 
grain roasting, malt roasting, uh, transition to an indirect heat where instead of the fires being directly under, they are off to the side and you're merely heating or there's heating elements or there's some other mechanized, more efficient, modern method of roasting, darkening those grains to produce the malt. And so the smoke has not been an aspect, it appears, at all. Now, I'm not saying that this has smoke in it or has been smoked, but I'm smelling something smoky. So let's put it that way. I smell a campfire. <laughs> Maybe even a touch of vanilla. There's a lot of layers to this, and I imagine as it warms up, it'll probably show us even more. It's quite interesting. I'm looking forward to this. Hmm, yeah, that's quite good. Well, let's dive in. Hmm. Ooh, okay. Molasses. Lots of molasses. And definitely a smokiness. But it's like a grandma's molasses, a really sweet, nice molasses, not a, a black strap, you know, really burning molasses. Definitely a bit of cherry, maybe some chocolate in there too. There's a kind of a, a bright berry after note, not really aftertaste, like it's not lingering. It's like first I, I get the molasses and then I get this kind of brighter berry, almost a totally separate thing. And then it's gone and I'm left, left with this really nice kind of creamy, dark, rich molasses. Um, but it's, it's like a berry molasses. You can make molasses out of a lot of different um, things. Pretty much any sweet fruit, any source of, of natural sugar can have a molasses made out of it. So you can find molasses that are made out of um, pomegranates and, and such. And this kind of reminds me of what I haven't actually had a pomegranate molasses. I've only ever had Blackstrap or Grandma's. But um, this kind of reminds me of what I'm what I think a pomegranate molasses might taste like that kind of bright fruit taken to a really dark burnt sugar level. Uh, so you have the bright fruit, but you also have this real dark, you know, molasses character, but they're, they're combined. They're the same thing. This is a really, this is a really sweet, very sweet beer. Uh, I am not sure that I would say it's 55 bittering units. I suppose there is a bit of like super dark chocolate to espresso coffee in here. That might be some bitterness, but the sweetness is the dominant aspect. And it's not just a candy sweetness. It's this really, really deep, dark, stout, molasses, you know, dried cherry think dark sweet things and that's what this is that's the primary aspect and then on the back end you can taste a bit of this uh counterpoint um uh like dark baker's you know black chocolate to baker's chocolate no, not black chocolate dark chocolate to baker's chocolate uh, maybe espresso coffee that provides a bit of bitterness um it's not unpleasant it's, it's there, I'm just not sure, I don't actually even know how IBUs are determined, but the bitterness doesn't really show up. Like I expect more bitterness considering this is a 55 bittering units beer. That's not immediately evident. This is a really nice beer for, it doesn't need to be a cold day because it is a sour, uh, stout, it has that brightness. It, it doesn't have to be a cold day. It can stand up more to, to nicer weather, to warmer weather. Um, but it's a really good, like a, a savoring beer. Uh, definitely to share with somebody with that level of, of a <laughs> at nine percent ABV. Um, you know, small glasses, enjoy it over a period of time in the evening after dinner. Maybe it's a, almost a dessert beer. It's quite quite tasty, and it's not. You know, like I've described, it's not a one note wonder. It's got multiple layers. There's almost a kind of a salted caramel I'm picking up at different times now uh, as the beer warms, continues to warm. Um, 
just le lends itself even to more interestingness. Hmm. That's quite nice. I like that a lot. <laughs> this one I definitely would <laughs> plan on grabbing again. Uh, it, it just combines it combines the the molasses, the, the dark notes of the stout, and these really nice, juicy, bright, uh, sour notes. And this isn't like it's a tart beer, but as in a sour beer style, which is typically or typified by by typified by the 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 stone fruits, the the cherries and stuff like that. This kind of really bright, uh, jubilant, fruity, juicy note, um, and it works really well together. And it's really nicely crafted. And I don't think I'd pair this with any food except maybe a, a nice, like a creamy cheese, possibly. Yeah. You know, like a mild cheese, not, not anything uh, too bitter or too stinky or funky. Um, I think that would probably stand up to that. I mean, actually thinking about it now, probably a charcuterie board would work pretty nicely with this. Uh, light on the Light on the fruit, though. I would take this more with the salty and the savory side of the charcuterie, the nuts, the meats, the cheeses, etc. No, but it definitely tastes like a special occasion beer all the way through. <laughs> From the nose to the dregs. <laughs> Anyways, this has been the magical Aging Experiment 9 and 3 quarters Barrel Aged Sour Stout batch number five by Double Mountain Brewing. And I will catch y'all on the flip side.